Hello, I'm Seema and welcome to part 18 of the chapter Equilibrium. In part 17, we started discussing the factors affecting equilibria and I told you about the Lee-Shatlayer's principle. The factors that affect equilibria are concentration, a change in concentration when the reaction has achieved equilibrium, a change in pressure, the addition of an inert gas, the change in temperature and the addition of a catalyst. Now from this video onwards we are going to discuss these one by one. So the topic of this video is going to be the factor that is concentration and how the change in concentration affects equilibria. We know according to Lee Chatelier's principle, whenever a stress is given to a reaction which is already in equilibrium, the equilibrium shifts in a direction or starts proceeding in that direction where it can remove that effect. So whenever a reaction takes place, the aim of the reaction, if it is a reversible reaction, is to reach that point of equilibrium, that is to achieve the value of Kc. That is where the concentrations of the reactants and the products become constant and the rates of the forward and backward reactions become, uh, become the same. <coughs> so what happens when you change the concentration of a substance that is a reactant or a product when, it is, when the reaction is already in equilibrium? When the concentration of any of the reactants and products in a reaction equilibrium is changed, the composition of the equilibrium mixture also changes. And it changes so that, so as to minimize the effect of that concentration change. So what have we done in this statement? We've just changed the Le Chatelier's principle in terms of concentration. Whenever the concentration is changed, According to Lee Shatler's principle, the reaction will proceed in such a direction that can remove that effect of the change. That is, if you add a reactant or a product, the reaction will proceed in that direction which will use up that reactant and product so that it brings it back to equilibrium. If you have removed a reactant or a product, the reaction will start proceeding in that direction in which it can replenish it again, where it, you have removed it so it will try to give it back. So it is a way of making up for whatever has happened, whatever error or whatever disturbance took place. The reaction tries to move in a direction to make up for that, for that change. So the concentration stress of an added reactant or a product, if you add a reactant or a product and that causes a stress, and this stress is relieved by a net reaction in such a direction that consumes the added substance. So if you added the reactant, now if you add a reactant, in which direction is the reaction going to proceed to remove that effect? In which direction will it use the reactant? It will use the reactant in the forward direction. Therefore, the reaction will start proceeding in the forward direction. If you add a product, if you add a product, in which direction is the product being used? It is being used in the backward direction. So addition of a reactant or a product causes a stress and that stress is relieved by the reaction taking place in that direction which removes that stress. Similarly, if you remove a reactant or a product, the same thing will happen. If you remove, let us say I remove the reactant. Now the reactant concentration has decreased. So in order to increase the concentration of the reactants, the reaction should proceed in the backward direction so that it gives more reactant and the concentration increases. So the concentration stress of a removed reactant and product will re result in the reaction which replenishes the removed substance so that whatever has been removed it should be formed. So the reaction starts taking place in that direction where it would be formed. Let us take this example of hydrogen and iodine. They react to give you hydrogen iodide. Let us assume that we add hydrogen. If we add hydrogen, what is hydrogen? Hydrogen is a reactant. So the concentration of the reactants has increased. When you add a reactant, the concentration of the reactant has increased. So the reaction should proceed in that direction so as to decrease that increased concentration. So when will the concentration of the reactant be decreased? When the reaction, when the reactant is being used up and the reactant is being used up in the forward direction. So the reaction will proceed in the forward direction. 
So according to Lee Shatley's principle, in case of addition of reactant or product, a new equilibrium will be set up. Whenever you add a reactant or a product, a new equilibrium will be set up because first there's a disturbance. You added a reactant, like I said, when we added hydrogen, a disturbance was created. Now the, the entire reaction will start shifting towards the forward direction in order to use that added hydrogen until another equilibrium is established, right? So a new equilibrium will be set up in which the concentration of the substance should be less than what was after addition but more than what it was in the original mixture. <clears throat> in order to understand uh, this, um, let me just take this example of, of QC. As soon as I added hydrogen, that was a reactant, what is QC? QC is the ratio of the concentrations of the products divided by the ratio of the con by the uh, concentration of the reactants. So, as soon as you add hydrogen, what happens to the value of QC? Hydrogen is in the denominator. Therefore, the value of QC becomes less. It decreases. And KC and QC are equal at equilibrium. So the moment QC changes, it becomes less than KC. The reaction starts proceeding in the forward direction. So the, when it starts proceeding in the forward direction, the ratio of, of hydrogen iodide, that is the reactants and the products, should become the same. But the concentrations are not the same. In KC, we had original concentrations of the reactants and products. Now, after adding a reactant, the concentrations have changed. So this new equilibrium which will be established now, when QC shifts towards KC and the reaction takes place in the forward direction, it will use up some of that added hydrogen. But it will only use as much as is needed so that the ratio of the, the reactants and the products again becomes the same, that is equal to KC. The ratio should be the same, the numerical values of the concentrations will be different, but the ratio should become the same. And that happens when the concentration of the substance, which should be less than what was after the addition, it in the final, now in the final equilibrium state, the added, you added hydrogen and the reaction took place in the forward direction to use up some of that hydrogen. So now at the new equilibrium, the concentration of hydrogen will be less than what it was when, what it was when you added the total amount, but it will be more than the original one because now the ratio itself has remained the same, but the concentrations have changed. Therefore, a new equilibrium is established with different concentrations, but the value of KC is, and QC become equal. That is, the ratios become equal. So, I'll read the statement again. According to Lee Shatler's principle, in case of addition of a reactant or a product, a new equilibrium will be established in which the concentration of that substance which has been added it should be less than what was after the addition because it has been used up in that direction. But it would still be more than what it was before adding the original, before adding it at when it was already at equilibrium. So than what it was in the original mixture which was already at equilibrium. Now you've also understood how QC and KC affect the equilibrium. Let us now understand this a little better. We know QC is the ratio of the re, uh, concentrations of the products over reactants at any time, whether the, it is equilibrium or not. But KC, KC is the same ratio at equilibrium. The moment equilibrium is disturbed, we calculate QC. If QC is less than KC, then the reaction proceeds in the forward direction. You remember in a, a couple of videos before this, I told you how do we predict the direction of a reaction based on QC and KC, values of QC and KC. If you do not understand what I'm telling you now, I would encourage you to go back a few videos and watch that. So if you add something that causes the value of QC to decrease, then the reaction proceeds in the forward direction. Or if you remove something 
the reactant or product due to which the concentration decreases and as a result of which QC becomes less or more the reaction proceeds in that direction that is let us say it, the you have removed something you've removed the product so the value of QC decreases the moment the value of QC becomes less than KC the reaction proceeds in the forward direction so you if you calculate QC at any time and you know KC just by knowing the difference between them whether QC is less or more you can tell in which direction would the reaction proceed in order to acquire a new equilibrium so if hydrogen is added then hydrogen is a is a reactant so it is in the denominator therefore the value of QC would be less than KC if value of QC is less than KC the reaction proceeds in the forward direction and if you remove uh, hydrogen now you've removed a reactant if you remove the reactant you the denominator has become smaller therefore the entire number is larger that is QC has become greater than KC the moment QC becomes greater than KC in order to remove that effect the reaction starts proceeding in the backward direction what is the commercial application of this knowledge that we have the commercial application there are two very important ones that are mentioned in your textbook in Haber's process Haber's process is a process of industrially preparing ammonia and you know ammonia is, a, is used a lot as a fertilizer and is one of the major components of the fertilizer industry so when you prepare ammonia from the nitrogen and hydrogen which is present um, nitrogen in the air is used up to make it in this process when ammonia you have reactants and products all of which are gases so and it establishes an equilibrium any reaction which leads to an equilibrium it after a certain time once it establishes equilibrium you do not get any more product because the, re the reaction is proceeding in the same with the same speed in both the directions so you want the reaction to proceed in the forward direction so what do we do we use this knowledge that if we remove ammonia from this reaction mixture it will cause a disturbance in the equilibrium the moment you have removed the product if you remove the product the value of QC what will happen to QC the value of QC will decrease it will become less than KC the moment the value of QC becomes less than KC the reaction starts proceeding more towards the forward direction the net reaction is in the forward direction and that is what we want we want more and more ammonia to be formed so this is very easy so how do we do it we take all three our gassy our gases so we liquefy out of these three ammonia liquefies easily because it's a heavier gas in comparison to the other two so when ammonia liquefies it turns into a liquid and we just separate it out from the reaction mixture as ammonia is moving out the reaction continues in the forward direction and we keep getting more and more yield of ammonia another application of this knowledge is in the manufacture of lime from calcium carbonate we know calcium carbonate decomposes to give you calcium oxide which is lime which is used in a lot of construction work and building material and carbon dioxide now both of these are solids and carbon dioxide is a gas so what do you do very easy the idea is to remove one of the products to make the reaction proceed in the forward direction let the gas just blow away let it just fly away so the carbon dioxide which is produced it evaporates and or rather it just uh, moves away and this carbon dioxide that is constantly removed from the kiln the kiln is an oven is a uh, is an oven in which very high temperatures can be maintained so the carbon dioxide is constantly removed from the kiln so that you only have calcium carbonate and calcium oxide and therefore again with the removal of carbon dioxide the concentration of the products the concentration of the products is decreasing as a result of which QC becomes less than KC and as soon as QC becomes less than KC the reaction proceeds in the forward direction so uh, I hope you've been able to understand how concentration affects the state of equilibrium and how with your understanding of QC and KC you can predict the direction of the reaction. Uh, with this I will finish this video and I hope it was helpful. If you found it helpful give it a thumbs up, subscribe to my channel, recommend it to your friends and please keep returning for more videos in chemistry. Thank you for watching and bye bye for now.